Hi everyone, here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum during Oz Armour Fest 2024, and we're taking a look today at a British tank from the World War II era. This is the Infantry Tank Mark IV, or as it was commonly called, the Churchill. Now, I made a video early in 2023 about the Churchill Crocodile Flame Tank that's on display at the Australian Army Tank Museum in Puckapunyal. So take a look at that video if you're interested. This version here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum is a slightly earlier variant that was brought to Australia late in World War II and like that crocodile, was here initially to be assessed for trials on their suitability for use in the tropics. In the end, about 51 Churchills were brought to Australia during World War II, but they never saw combat. Now, where did this tank come from? So prior to World War II, British tank doctrine recognized that there were three different types of tanks for different missions. Light tanks were to be used for scout and reconnaissance, Cruiser tanks were to be used for armoured breakthroughs and engaging other tanks, and infantry tanks were supposed to be used to support infantry that was on the move, to help them breaking up hard points, and to neutralise enemy infantry. And the Churchill Infantry Tank Mark IV was an example of the latter. It was designed to replace the Valentine Infantry Tank Mark III with an upgunned and more heavily armoured vehicle. Now this variant here at the museum is the Mark VII of the Churchill, and its main design improvement over earlier marks of the tank was that it mounted a QF 75mm main gun, and this gun was able to use the same ammunition as the US Army uh, M3 75mm um, tank gun that was mounted to the M4 Sherman. This gave the Churchill the capability to fire both an armour piercing and an effective high explosive round, which is useful when you're doing infantry support work. The other improvement in the Mark VII of the Churchill was that it had substantially more frontal armour, being 152mm thick on the turret and the hull fronts, which was an increase from 102mm that was used in earlier marks. Now the predecessor of the Churchill, or the Infantry Tank Mark IV, was the Valentine. This was the Infantry Tank Mark III, and that had been rushed into production in mid-1940, following the loss of most British armoured vehicles during the Battle of France. The Churchill was to be a more refined and improved version of an infantry tank with greater frontal armour. Prototypes for the Churchill, which were termed the A20 and the A22, were developed in late 1939 and early 1940 and were built and tested in mid to late 1940. These were also ultimately put into production um, and build started from June 1941. Early marks of the tank exhibited a lot of teething problems, largely centred around reliability of the engine and gearbox, which were all new designs in this tank. It was used in combat in August 1942 for the first time during the raid on Dieppe and Churchills equipped with six pounder guns, Mark III Churchills, were successfully employed in North Africa at the Battle of El Alamein um, late in 1942. From this point forward, it cemented its place within the Armoured Corps and had a reputation which it uh, earned from those battles and which was ultimately used in uh, most theatres of, the, uh, of the war. Now, it was produced in various marks from 1941 to 1944 with many specialised variants, and it was fitted with a variety of anti-tank and dual-purpose guns, as well as howitzers. Total production of the tank was about 5,640, of which about 1,400 were the Mark 7s like the one that's here. Vauxhall Motors was the lead manufacturer and they used a number of subcontractors to support production, including remanufacturing of some of the older Marks, marks to bring them up to later specifications. From the Mark 7 onwards, which this is an example of, the tank was referred to as the A22F or Heavy Churchill due to the increase in armour that this variant saw, going from 102mm of frontal armour to 152 it was also exported to the USSR under Lend-Lease, with about 301 of some of the early marks being supplied to the Soviets. Now in terms of guns, as I mentioned, this version of the tank here had a QF 75mm main gun, and um, it was also fitted with coaxial and hull-mounted Beza 7.92mm machine guns. The QF 75mm was a modified version of the British QF 6 pounder gun that could use the same ammunition as I mentioned as the Sherman. The AP round um, of this 75mm uh, gun uh, could penetrate only about 68mm of angled rolled homogenous armour at 500 yards, um, which was substantially worse than the original 6-pounder gun and, and, and even didn't bear up well compared to the 2-pounder gun. However, it had an effective HE round that contained about 650 grams of explosive, which was useful when supporting infantry. The vehicle had a crew of five, two in the hull and three in the turret to service the armaments and, uh, and operate the vehicle. Now in terms of armour, as I mentioned, for the, for the later versions of the Churchill, the Mark 7 and the Mark 8, 152mm of frontal armour, 95mm of um, armour on the turret and hull sides, and 51mm on the rear, which was 50% more armour than, for example, the German Heavy Tiger 1. And it reflected that this was a slower moving tank that would likely be exposed to enemy fire for sustained periods while it was being used to support infantry. Now the engine was a Bedford 12-cylinder petrol engine producing 261 kilowatts, and it was effectively 
two inline six cylinder engines that were mounted flat opposite each other and joined to a common crankshaft. The transmission was a Merritt Brown four speed epicyclic gearbox that allowed the tank to be steered by changing the relative speeds of the two tracks rather than by braking the tracks as most tanks at the time were steered. The drive sprocket was mounted at the, uh, at the rear of the tank and the front had a um, idle wheel. Now the road wheels were interesting, they were 11 um, small diameter twin road wheels per side and each was mounted on a coil spring. So 22 road wheels in total, very small diameter. The Mark 7 engine and chassis could move this 40 ton tank along at a top speed of about 20 kilometers per hour, which was slower than earlier Marks, which were less heavily armored and consequently less, um, less weighty. Now, the Churchill was used in North Africa, on the Eastern Front by the Russians, in Italy, and the Mark 7 shown here first saw combat in Northwest Europe from June 1944. Played a pivotal role in Normandy, Belgium and the Netherlands, and it was used effectively in uh, February and March 1945 in Germany, where its ability to cross muddy ground and force routes through heavily forested areas around the Reichswald came into, uh, came into the fore. Post-war it, uh, it saw limited use during the Korean War and was ultimately retired from British service in 1952. Well, that's everything I want to say about the uh, Churchill tank here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum. I thank you for watching and listening to me bang on about this armoured vehicle. Look forward to talking to you soon about another armoured vehicle or tank. And until then, I hope you stay well. Thank you.